Hello, I'm Lorenzo and you're watching KSP to Mars, the show where we play around in the real solar system mod and so far haven't really gotten anywhere. Today marks the first honest to god actual try for orbit. We have a big rocket here with a seven column first stage, a one column second stage and a small third stage which is hidden here in the fairings base. It's all robotic so there's no chance of any Kerbal getting hurt and we have a science payload of two materials base and two goo canisters intended for transmission. I haven't yet figured out how to get anything back to the planet safely, so this ship is intended to stay in orbit, or if it doesn't make orbit, to, well, then burn up. It doesn't carry any parachutes. So, here we go. The flight plan is to get some altitude first, let's say about, well, about 10 kilometers, and then gently start pitching over. These strap-on boosters, they will run out before the center column, but only by a small margin. According to the engineering plugin, we will have about 400 meters per second of delta V once they run out. It had also promised me a 1.6 thrust to weight ratio, which I suppose is what we're getting, but I would have liked to see a little bit more acceleration from this puppy. As of this moment, I am officially not optimistic for it making orbit. It does look nice though, it's nice, long and spindly, and it has the fairing on top to make everything nice and aerodynamic. I'm very anxious to get the the bigger Rocomax part fuel tanks and engines and that will hopefully mark the beginning of well, properly large rockets that might actually make it somewhere. For now though we are steadily climbing upwards. It seems if you're used to stock ASP that we're at like, to 300 meters, but we are in fact already at 6,000 6, meters, 6 kilometers. So we are gaining altitude, and of course, the thick part of the atmosphere is correspondingly larger than it is on Kerbin. Let's just call this one Earth to prevent confusion. I'm going to try a gentle pitch over maneuver. This is dangerous because we're still in relatively thick air and we could easily uh, stall or modify our angle of attack too much and flip over, explode and die. Which of course is something we don't want. Another hazard in turning over is, that, is that you're still turning when your boosters run out. When you separate the boosters you want them to fall down cleanly and of course not hit your ship. So that's another danger. If you're performing intricate maneuvers try and do them. Uh, try and have them done, try to finish them by the time you want to do any staging because you want to do that in a clean trajectory. So far so good though, we are picking up the acceleration. We are getting some speed. We're at 500 meters per second now while supersonic. And also coming up on that booster separation. So let's see how that goes. It's always a pity when you knock off your own engine. Let's have a look at that. And here we go. Hey! That's my roommate coming home. We had a small explosion, but the engine is still firing. I don't know or much care what it was that exploded, but we are still heading upwards. And now I'm going to attempt to finish the pitch over maneuver. In the meantime, we are already at a good 50 kilometers altitude, and we have three whole stages left to burn. This leaves me hopeful we might even make it to orbit this time. I've also installed Ferrum's rigid joint system, and I'm fairly pleased with the results. These large spindly rockets are quite controllable, whereas in the stock game they would often wobble and break apart. Now the notes for the real solar system mod mentioned something about uh, there being an issue with the parts connections so that we would need this rigid joint connections. I've not run into the issue probably because I obeyed, obeyed and got the rigid joint connector back but so far I'm liking that one as well. On the whole I can recommend this set of mods. It's making for a nice uh, game-changing experience. We are in fact still in the upper atmosphere, but that is definitely the upper reaches. We're at 95 kilometers and I think in the real solar system mod the atmosphere ends at about 105. We 
discovered that experimentally by, well, by missing a upper atmosphere sample opportunity. Now all we have to do is see, well, is watch the rocket burn really and see if and how that will get us into orbit. So I'm going to lock it at the 90 degree heading pointed directly at the horizon and basically just give it time until the rockets are burnt out. Don't really have much else to say so I will accelerate that burn for you. I don't want to give you a hard cut but uh, I will show you this in time accelerated fashion so I'll talk to you when something happens. So here we are in the last stage, the probe is uh, struggling for orbit and you can see we are burning almost straight up. This is not the direction you want to be burning when you are trying to make orbit, but our trajectory is so shallow that we have to, to postpone our plummeting back to the planet. This leads me to believe that we will probably not make orbit this time around. Doesn't matter though, we are still going to try because this little rocket with the little engine sure has a lot of delta V remaining. In the meantime we can try a transmission of the materials bay from space. We have not done that before. Well, we've done it once before but then it kind of burned up and we couldn't use it. So I'm going to transmit this data home and then yes it tells us that the module will be inoperable. So let's go ahead and transmit that data. And we have enough electricity because, as you can see, the probe is full of batteries. Now I wonder what will happen if I try this again. If I try this again, I get almost nothing from transmitting and still have almost everything intact from recovery. So that's behavior as expected, but, well, useless to us because there's no way we are going to get this back to the planet without it being incinerated. We can try the same for the materials bay. And to do that, well, we can either recover it or trash it. So this mission, even though we are going faster and further than anyone has before, will in fact be almost useless. Isn't that ironic? We will need a way to get our spaceships, be they robots or kerbals, back to the planet so that the science can be recovered. And this is what I will be experimenting with for the next episode even before getting to orbit, because this is still not even close to an orbit, even though this rocket had almost 11 kilometers per second of delta V. We need some more powerful rockets. We need more powerful rockets, and we need a way to survive the fiery re-entry. Difficult challenges to be sure, but in the meantime I suppose we will just be exploring more biomes getting science and more interesting parts and larger rockets. Now I could... Now I'd used a 7 column booster, I can of course increase that, but if we go wider then the rockets will become uncontrollable. This is a problem that is not yet solved. We are doing pretty well on the orbital front. Though. We are almost at 6 kilometers per second at an altitude of 150 kilometers, and while that is not not quite an orbit yet, it is more than halfway there. So this efficient engine is a great asset to our space program, and now all we need is a more efficient, a larger booster. What I might try for the next time is a very small, very light probe, so none of this malarkey. But then again, what's the point? If we get a small probe in orbit, it will have no science instruments, it will not be recovered. So, we will not have any scientific reason to do so. We would, however, have a prestige reason to do so, because I want something in orbit of this planet. So, the rocket has burned out, we can for sure definitely tell that we are going to land, we're not even going to make it intercontinental. And let's time warp 
And at least... Ooh, we're going fast now. Time warp until we're in the atmosphere. Here we are. Now we're going to transmit our data back to the Kerbal Space Center. It's scraps. It's science scraps. Nothing interesting. But perhaps... Well... Well, let's go for the z point z point 0.3 science points, why not? And now we should be able to enjoy a fiery, fiery demise of this probe, because we will be re-entering at 6 kilometers per second. That is faster than I have ever re-entered anything anywhere. So this should be spectacular. We have no heat shields, no nothing, we just have some batteries. A lot of batteries, actually, a lot of charge remaining in them. But I don't think this probe will last too long. We are already heating up pretty fast. Slowing down. I wonder if it will be the G-forces or the heating that is going to destroy it. We're at 50 kilometers now. Slowing down rapidly. And there we go. The first explosion happened. I don't know. I think that was something that's on the side. So we're coming apart now. Explosions following explosions. The craft is being barbecued and still traveling at 5 kilometers per second. Unfortunately, its robot hearth is completely unfeeling. Its robot heart, excuse me. Completely unfeeling and doesn't mind being incinerated. And there it goes. Bam. At an altitude of 38 kilometers and a final speed of 4450 meters per second. So fast and hot. That was today's episode. A bit anticlimactic, perhaps. I was expecting that to go to orbit. But we did manage to beam a bit of science back. 26 points, to be precise. And I reckon I'm going to go for this bit next. 45 we need for that for the tricoupler. Which will help us build larger rockets, which is something we obviously need to get where we want to be. Which is anywhere but on Kerbin. Anyway, thanks for watching once again, watching me explode and burn, as happens more often these days that we are playing with uh, difficulty mods. So if you like this, subscribe, like, comment, or just enjoy it. See you for the next episode, where hopefully we will get somewhere. Goodbye.